Okay, so we are going to draw Nika here, um, German Shepherd puppy that is unfortunately no longer with us. Um, so we're gonna paint this sort of as a memorial to her, who um, she is the, the dog of a student's son. Um, so this is what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna start with our pencil. Just gonna do a pencil drawing. So just have this off to the side. And if you wanna get really detailed with this, you can grid this out in like per inch or a one inch cubes and do the same over here, sort of scale it down. Um, but for right now, we're just gonna draw it freehand. Uh, and you can see in this sample photo, she's just sitting on the floor. Um, we're gonna envision her in a different atmosphere, probably outside. Um, so I'm gonna make her a little bit smaller, proportional wise than she is here on, on our paper so that we can show a little bit of that background. So here we have just the general shape of her head in a circle. Got her two ears coming up. Um, since her muzzle comes out a little bit, but it's foreshortened since she's looking straight at us or just off to the side, uh, her nose is gonna be a little bit off center. Eyes up here. And then we have to make room for all this fuzziness along her neck. So here's sort of her chest shape. Uh, and then her, art, her legs get cut off a little bit, but we have some extra space. So here's when we have to get a little bit inventive about where her arms and legs are going. And just make sure that they taper off a little bit since the, um, the arms as it, get, as it gets closer to the body are just gonna be thicker. So just make sure that the, the shapes are tapering off a little bit. And then we have her, her body is right off center so you can see a little bit of her back and her hind legs and her back paw there. So that is the pretty basic shape of Nika here. Uh, and then what we can do now is go back in with a little bit more detail. Uh, and we're, I'm doing this in a, knowing that a lot of this pencil mark is gonna come through the watercolor. Um, if you don't want your pencil marks to come through the watercolor, keep this stage very, very light. Um, but I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a darker pencil. I was using a 3H to begin with, and now I'm using an HB, so it's gonna be a little bit softer, therefore it's gonna make a darker line. And with this pencil is where I'm gonna really come in with the furriness, right? So we always have to remind ourselves that we are painting a furry creature, so they're gonna be covered in this. And when we start using our watercolors and making those kinds of brush strokes, we can really emphasize the hair a lot more, or the fur a lot more. And then you can see if you really get up close to the photo, um, Nika has quite a bit of a black border around her eye. So we're gonna block that in with this pencil. Sort of like if you wanna equate this with like a panda bear eye, they have that big dark patch around both their eyes. Nika here has like a, a smaller patch it's not as huge as a panda, but it's definitely still there. And 
and you don't have to fill this in with pencil if you want to fill this in with watercolor you can do that like I said my my painting is gonna show some pencil throughout so I'm blocking this in now just so that I know that those are that's an area that needs to be dark Okay, and since her nose is closest to us, the nose is going to be a bit bigger in proportion to the eyes than they would be normally. Um, and you also have to keep in mind this is the top of the nose and then this front part of the nose comes down. So those are going to be two different planes. That's also another reason why the nose is taking up so much space. And we have her muzzle. Her, like little bottom lip um, another fun thing you can do if you want to call it fun uh, with a dog portrait is you can paint them with their tongue hanging out that just gives them a little bit more of a like friendly vibe um, I think Nika here is plenty friendly already but sometimes if you want to have that little tongue sticking out you can add that I'm going to stay true to this um, this portrait as much as I can just because it's a it's a memorial portrait. Um, all, the only thing I'm going to do is just ch change the, the surface that she's sitting on a little bit just so that it's uh, a little bit more colorful. Okay, um, so here we have some hair and it's going it to, depending on the photo you're working from, it might be a little bit hard to see this hair, but here you can see that there's a little bit of a shadow so the hair above that shadow is getting some sunlight and then it's casting a shadow on hair below it so I want to make sure I single out those hairs and right now we're not at the stage where we're drawing every single hair um, we're not even going to get to that point when we're watercoloring um, so I'm just doing a general Sort of scratchy texture to indicate the boundary of her fur and just make sure I'm getting the same overall shape uh, and then we have her collar peeking out right under this ridge of fur that collar is actually what is creating that ridge of fur so we'll just draw in that collar and I'm gonna make sure she has two little tags, one that's a heart shape, and then one I think is a bone shape, but we can't see the other half of the bone. So I wanna make sure that I have those right. Just so that it's very obvious that this is who we're painting. She probably wore these tags most of her life. They might be, these might be iconic to the owner, so we're gonna keep, keep true to that. All right, um, and then you'll see the changes in the color of her fur. So back here is when we start to have some of that back fur, black fur that's coming in from her back. And there's like just slightly little stripes of that gray, that black fur. So I wanna indicate that in my sketch. We have another bit of that gray fur coming in under these tags. And then there's a whole swath of white fur. 
and then just a teeny, teeny edge of black fur there. All right, and like we've done with portraits before, if you've painted portraits before, everything around the face, so the face is what we want to be in the most focus. So everything around is gonna get a little less detail, and probably once we start painting, it's gonna get blurry. Um, so what we're gonna, that's how we're gonna treat her legs here. Since we don't really see them in the photo, but we don't wanna cut off anything we're just gonna draw those legs in but they're in reality they're not gonna get a whole lot of detail once we start painting and definitely back here since this is what's furthest from our eye as the viewer this is gonna get a lot less detail and not much not much a lot less detail in the pencil and then a lot less detail with the watercolor as well um, but I do want to draw in her little toes back here since we can see them in the photo. Okay. Uh, and then again, since I said I was gonna change the atmosphere or what she's sitting on, I'm going to have a little bit of a horizon line up here. I want her to be outside because all dogs should be able to enjoy the outside. Uh, and then we can imagine maybe there's like trees back here. We'll very lightly paint those in again. These aren't going to get a lot of detail. Um, we're just setting the scene for her to be enjoying the outdoors in in her little doggy afterlife. Uh, and then we'll probably do some like grass. I'll do some tiny indications of grass that she's sitting in. It's like she's waiting for you to toss a ball at her or something. Okay, so that is the end of the drawing phase. Um, if you want to spend more time on your drawing phase, please do. If you need to erase things and go back over, feel free. Um, but I think I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good with this. I might erase a little bit of it just so that those lines are knocked down a little bit more. So yeah, I'm just gonna do a overall erasing. I'm gonna leave the eyes alone. But everything else I think I can knock down a little bit. think about painting Nika here we're gonna start with her surroundings right so because I'm placing her outdoors I'm gonna come in with just a wash of green and so I'm mixing a pretty earthy green mixing in some yellow This is the color green I'm going with. So starting with a, a green that's already got some reds and purples and browns in it so that it's, it's a more subtle green. And then adding more yellow. 
And what I'm going to do is just come in with clear water and paint around Nika. And I don't care too much if some of this water bleeds into Nika herself. Um, when you're painting something in a background, especially if it's outdoors, some of this surrounding color is going to be reflected on your subject anyway. Um, so if some of this green bleeds into Nika's face or fur, that is quite all right. You know, in reality, some of that light would be peeking through her fur anyway. I'm actually even going to paint her little bottom here so that we have, you know, that green layer that will layer darker fur onto, but at least it will have a little bit of that green undertone. And my paper is drying already. It's already dried up over here, so I'm gonna get that wet again. Okay, and then we can go in with our green and then just start blocking that in. And we'll make this green sort of shift the farther away it gets. But for right now, we just wanna get this color in while our paper is wet. I, I am going to stop this green right at that horizon line that I drew because that's where our sky will start. I am going to paint the trees though just so that I know where those trees are going to go. And then yeah, I'm painting in this area where her fur is gonna get kind of dark, just so that it has that green undertone. Um, but the places that are white, like her, sort of the inside of her back leg and her paw, I'm gonna leave that alone for right now. Okay, so what we can do now, now that we have that main layer down, is I'm gonna create another green, a little darker, a more vibrant green, and then I'm gonna block in some of the areas closest to us. Just again, so that there's a shift in that color. and we create some depth that the grass sort of fades out a little bit the further away it gets. And we can do this in multiple layers. I'm probably just gonna do a few after letting this dry. Okay, so while that background color is drying, we can focus on Nika's face. So she has some orange bits, sort of right on the edge of her ear, in between her eyes, even above and underneath her eyes. So let's mix a very pale orange. I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt sienna to that just so that it, the, the orange out of my tube is like a neon orange, so I have to dull it down a little bit with some burnt sienna. And then just add a lot of water to it just so that it dilutes and becomes a little even more subtle. Okay, 
Okay. And I'm just, sorry, I'm doing all this using my number 12. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna head back to my number eight um, for a little bit more details. And then I have also a number three that I'll use eventually. Uh, and then I have a number one, which I don't know if I'll use that one, we'll see. Okay, so like I said, this, this orange color, I'm just gonna block in where I see it going. So it sort of comes between the eyes and it leaves, there she's got like white spots right where her eyebrows are. So I'm gonna leave those areas alone. But then that orange comes right back into the corner of her eye and then comes down. And some of her muzzle, like the length of the muzzle has some of that orange. The orange gets the deepest, like right in the corner, inner corner of her eye. And it actually, the orange changes. It sort of turns more red once you get to the center or the, sorry, the inner corner of her eye. I'll, I'll mix a color for that next. Um, let's see, this color goes to the top of her head. And then around this eye, leaving that white space where her quote unquote eyebrow goes. The inner side of this eye also gets a little bit darker, more of a red, which we'll do that in a second. And then there's a little white space under her eye, just like over here. Okay, and then right on the edge of the ear, there's a bit of yellow and it comes down here just a touch. Um, and then it comes back up. The very edges of her ears have that subtle orange color. Okay. Um, okay, so that's pretty much, maybe there's a little bit of orange in this little um, bushel here. Um, and then there's like tiny, tiny hints of that orange down here. And I also see little hints of orange right on the top of her legs here, so I'm gonna Imagine that her arms have a bit more of the orange than, than what I can actually see. Paint those in. Uh, and then I don't see, maybe because it's so dark in the photo, but I don't see any orange hints over here. So I'm just going to leave that white for now. Um, see, there's little hints of orange right underneath her mouth. So put some there as well. Okay, so the next step I would do, um, I don't want to go super dark just yet, so I'm not going to do the darks of her fur, um, but what we can do is make a very light gray and start putting in some shadows. Um, and actually, maybe since she's outside, we can make a gray that sort of edges towards like a cool gray with some green in it. Okay. So yeah, I've mixed with some of the green that I had initially used in the grass. I'm mixing in a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of red to make a gray. 
out of that. And I'm gonna really water this down. Okay, so now we can go in with some shadows and maybe some some light indications of where that all that dark fur is gonna go. So I'm gonna come in and fill in her nose with this shadow color. And then that, whoop, that color could potentially start bleeding into the rest of your face here, which you don't want to do. So make sure to have tissues on hand so you can mop that up when you go grab one. I'm gonna mop up because yeah, I don't want I don't want that color bleeding into into Nika's face here. Um, so this shadow color also comes down into her mouth area with a, just a slight white highlight, and those are from because she was um, I believe she was 14. Um, so a lot of the white around the muzzle is just from white hair from old age but she has that very light white hair separation from the top of her mouth to the bottom of her mouth so let's make sure that we leave that in there and this area in particular the mouth is where we'll really use our smaller brushes to get more detail Um, but even here, as I'm putting in this gray, grayish green color, I'm trying to make really small brush strokes so that it, it feels like it's hair. coming back into her, like the corner of her mouth back here. And then I'm gonna use this same color just to indicate where her fur needs to get really dark. And again, we can do this in multiple layers. Um, right now I'm just putting in this really faint gray just so that we know where her fur is gonna get a little bit darker. And I'll do it down here where it's the the darker fur gets really really thin but there's definitely still some down there okay. and then same on this side we have again this tuft of fur is casting a shadow onto the fur below it And then we have a long line of dark hair coming right up under the leash, or um, sorry, the collar and the tags here. No touch. Uh, and then in a general wash, I'm just gonna throw in this shadow color on her back where her fur is gonna get really dark. And make sure that the edge here, you're making marks so that it seems like it's a little irregular, just to show off that it's furry back here in the least amount of detail. Um, since we're not getting, we're not getting gonna get super detailed back there. Uh, and then this dark fur just curves down right in front of her leg. And then when you're filling in this shadow color and it's up against a very light part of the face, 
um, just really short brush strokes and that will reinforce the furriness that's on her face. Definitely don't do a big bold straight line. Just come in here with the very tip of your paintbrush and you can switch to a smaller brush right now if you want to. Actually, probably after I do this layer, I'll switch to my number eight. Um, just so that we can make sure we preserve as much furriness as possible. All right. So I'm gonna let that layer dry a little bit before we move on. Okay, so I'm switching to my number eight brush. Uh, and I'm gonna do, while Nika here is drying, I'm gonna do a little bit of more work on the background. So using that same tan color that we used on Nika's face and fur, I'm gonna intensify that a little bit. Not too much, I just want it to be a, a slightly different color. So I'm adding some burnt sienna to it. And I'm going to drop in where I wanted these trees to go back here. And these are the tree trunks. Um, I'm probably not gonna do a whole lot of leaves and foliage, foliage back here, just again, because I want the focus to be on Nika's face. Um, but we'll probably do a little bit just for some texture back here. Um, and you can do these in varying widths, just so that some trees look like they're farther away than others. I'm gonna do the thinnest ones stop sort of right on the horizon line, so those are the ones that are farthest away. Um, the trees that are closer will be a little bit more in focus than the ones that are furthest away, so they might get a couple of coats of this brown color. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do now is there are some more colors in Nika's face here, like the inside of her ears get pretty pink. So I'm gonna mix a very light pink color here. Um, Cause the pink that she's got going on is very, very pale. And it doesn't look like it has any other colors in it. Just a very pale pink. So all I'm doing here is just diluting a cadmium red quite a lot. Just so that it's barely registering. And hopefully it's registering on video. <laughs> And 
ring. Okay, so I think a lot of this shadow color has dried pretty well, so I'm going to make a slightly different shadow color and more of a neutral gray than the slightly green gray. Uh, and I'm gonna come in and do a couple more shadows. Like there's a shadow, or maybe it's not a shadow. She just has darker fur kind of along her muzzle that lightens up as soon as it gets near the eyes. So I'm just gonna block that in. Um, but I'm gonna come in with clear water on the edges of that just to blend it in. Um, she also has some shadows on the inner corners of her eyes. And then the top of her head here, she has some darker fur. can see over here, there's a little bit of a black spot sort of on the side of her head. Mark that in. Same over here, you just can't see as much of it. Um, under her eyes, she has a little bit of a dark some more dark hairs. And then certainly around, around her nose like we did before with the greenish gray. I'm gonna come over top with the neutral gray just to spread that grayness out a little bit more. And then because I want to make sure we know where her face ends, I'm going to put a shadow underneath her bottom lip just so that we know. And also, you know, my light source is going to be different from what is in this photo she, since she's indoors and I'm putting her outdoors. So if, her, if she's casting a shadow onto herself a little bit, I need to show that since our light source is above her. And then I'm just going to use that color to create a little bit of furriness texture on various parts of her, like above her eyes. You can tell there's a bunch of fur. Um, down here I'm going to use that color to enhance some of the shadows we've already put down there. Always keeping in mind that if you are painting a cast shadow, it's not going to be a smooth, straight line. We always got to keep in mind that there's fur, so our shadows are going to be textured the same way. Okay, and now I'm going to start layering this shadow color onto the parts of her that are actually dark, just to put another layer. And eventually we will put so many layers of color on the dark parts of her fur that it will look pretty black. It's not going to be a true black, but it'll be, it'll be dark enough. Uh, same with her nose. Her nose is definitely the one of the darkest things in the painting. Um, so I'm gonna make sure. I am gonna use this color to reinforce where her nostrils are. 
because we do want there's just enough of a highlight on her nose so you can tell where her nostrils are so I'm gonna paint around her nostrils for now and then come back in and reinforce those once things dry a little bit more And then the top of her nose has just a slight highlight as well. So I'm going to leave some of that area lighter. Okay, and then when you look at her eyes, her eyes are sort of like the orange color in her fur. So I'm going to go back to that color, which remember I had turned into a more brownish orange for the trees. I'm going to go back and add a little bit more orange so that it looks a little bit more golden. And then I'm gonna paint her eyes in with that golden color. of that color just so that it intensifies a little bit more okay um, so just like with her eyes her little tag here is gold but it's a little bit more of a yellowish gold so I'm gonna take some orange and some yellow Paint that in. And then she has this other tag that's a bright blue. So I'm gonna mix that up. that in okay again so we need to wait for parts of Nika to dry so what I'm gonna do now is well, actually, um, some of her leg needs some shadow, sort of this inner, inner part of her leg. Um, and then after that dries, we can, we can paint in some grass to show that she's really sitting in some grass here. Um, so I'm gonna start doing that off to the side while Nika's drying. So I'm gonna go to my number three paintbrush That'll really help us create some long brush strokes that'll feel like grass. Um, so I'm using the green that I used down here. It's much more diluted now because down here was already wet. But I'm using that same green to come in and paint some grass. And I'm covering her body just a little bit just to show that she's really sitting in the grass. Um, but for the most part, you know, try to be as random as possible. Uh, let the paint really run out so that you have some really light blades of grass and then, you know, right next to really dark ones. And you're just going to have to overlap a lot. Um, it'll be the most detailed right up here where her legs are and then we can start to phase it out. And you can also use multiple greens for this if you would, if you would like. Um, I might do a couple layers of this, so I'm just using one green right now. Just to get down this texture. And then we can change it up. Okay. 
I do want the grass that's right up next to her to be pretty dark since she's more likely than not she's casting a shadow onto the grass like that and then she'll have grass coming up in between And you'll see, you know, this grass is pretty translucent. Like you're still able to see her full leg through the grass, but that's just, that's just watercolor. So um, you're not gonna get these really nice, clean blades of grass if you do too many layers trying to get them um, more opaque. So I don't think it's an issue if you see some of her leg through the grass. Okay, and we're gonna do the same on this side. Have some blades of grass covering her a little bit. Um, but for the most part, grass is gonna, tends to if, if you're laying on the grass, grass tends to bend away from you. Um, unless it's like really long grass, which is what I'm attempting to do here is, is pretty long grass. If you want your grass to be shorter, um, you can hold your paintbrush a lot closer to the paper and just do, do those kind of marks. Um, I'm holding my hand up in the air and letting, because my number three paintbrush is pretty long. It's like an inch long, the bristles, if you can see. Um, so that's why I'm doing longer blades of grass, just because the paintbrush, is, this paintbrush is good for that. Um, but if you're working with a shorter paintbrush and you wanna do shorter blades of grass, you can do that. Uh, but I'm just gonna fill in this area with this grass texture. Again, making sure that the grass right up against her leg is pretty solid and darker. And then it'll fade out the further away. Um, and also when I'm doing grass, I always start with the grass as it's coming out of the ground. I rarely start at the top of a blade of grass and paint down. Um, you know, blades of grass taper for the most part at the end. Um, so always start at the root of your blades of grass. All right, so for the grass that sort of leads away from Nika here, I'm gonna grab a shorter paintbrush. So the bristles here are only like a fourth of an inch. So I'm gonna use, I'm also gonna make a different green. I'm gonna mix a little bit more yellow into it. Uh, and this is when you can come in. I have, I'm resting my hand on the table to have a little bit more control over the paintbrush. And then now I'm just making shorter blades of grass. And eventually you'll get so far away from your subject where you don't see the blades of grass anymore. I'm also painting these a lot farther apart than what I did down here. So a lot of that green that we painted on initially is gonna show through. Um, and this is the same technique we're gonna use on Nika to paint like her whiskers and her eyebrows and stuff. 
So get comfortable making these really short, and I'm going fairly quick. I don't want to like think about where all my little blades of grass are gonna go. One, because that would take forever, and two, it might start to look um, kind of manufactured. If you do this quickly and you take out the um, sorry, doing it quicker just takes out some of the manufactured look to it. Just makes it look speed equals random, I think, in, at least in my head. Okay. So I'm even going to, I think I went a little bit too far with my grass, so I'm going to come in with clear water just so that some of this grass blurs a little bit. All right, and then we have a little bit of an area over here where I can do this. I'm actually gonna have some grass coming out in between her toes. Again, really reinforcing that she's resting in the grass. And then I'm gonna take this grass texture all the way up to the top of her leg. Same as around here. And then we're just, you know, we're gonna imagine that grass keeps going, but we don't have to draw every single grass blade up there. Okay, so I'm going to stick with this paintbrush because what I want to do now is the smaller details. I'm going to come in with that golden color that we used for her eyes and just put another layer just so that that color intensifies. I'm, I'm going to mix a fairly dark color, so I'm using some burnt sienna, I'm mixing in some ultramarine blue, some alizarian crimson, just to make this color pretty rich and deep, because this is the color I want to use for the eyeballs, some of the details in the nose, just the really darker parts of Nico here, Nika, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to start with the nose because I want her eyes to dry out a little bit. And I'm using this darkest color to fill in the inside of her nostrils since those tend to be pretty dark. And then just making another layer of that dark color on the nose itself. I'm going to leave a little ridge at the top for a little bit of reflected light. And then this is a good stage to, you know, revisit the the actual shape of the nose. I feel like her nose is a little bit more heart-shaped than what I had originally. So I'm gonna use this dark color to just sort of build out the shape of her nose just a tad. Okay, and now I want to 
paint around her eye. Remember that black spot that's around both her eyes. And again, I'm gonna do this not in one solid line, but I'm gonna paint this as individual strands of fur. And be careful that, because my eye is, or uh, my eye of Nika is still a little bit wet with that golden color, so I'm trying not to paint into her, into that color at all. Eventually, we're gonna paint her pupils so they're just as dark as this color, but we have to wait until the color of her eyes dry. I'm gonna use this same color on the fur right at the end of her muzzle. Again, we're at this stage now since we're working with our smallest paintbrush where we can paint individual strands of fur. So that's what I wanna do on her muzzle since again, this face is what should be the most in focus. And that just means detail, detail, detail. I'm gonna paint her fur in and then we can come in and paint her whiskers. She's got some of this on her bottom lip. And then, so yeah, she has some whiskers. Again, always start at the root of whatever, you know, grass blade, wh whisker, whatever. Always start where it begins and paint out. She even has some hairs coming out of the like side. And definitely she's got some eyebrows, so we can paint hairs coming out of there. Okay. So what I wanna do now is, you know, her fur needs to get a lot darker and I've been waiting for this to dry. So I think it's dry enough now where I can use the same dark color I was just using for her nose and eyes and whiskers. I'm going back to my number three brush just so that I have, I'm covering a little bit more space with every brush stroke. Um, but even though we're not going to see the detail here, um, I do want to paint like I'm painting single pieces of fur just because I want some texture. And just especially pay attention to when you're painting this dark fur when it comes up against her face because you definitely want to leave all these little indications of the white fur. This is essentially negative painting where you're painting around 
what you want to focus on instead of painting the thing itself. Um, which, you know, you're painting the black fur, but you're also painting in the black fur to accentuate the white fur. So some of this dark fur comes up front, just a touch. And then the direction of the fur changes. It starts coming out this way. Um, again, because of that collar, it changes the direction of the fur. bit of black fur coming down here and then we can come back on this side she has some of that black fur same principle make sure you're not painting over any of the white fur above this black fur Another thing we need to do, I'm going to go back to one of my bigger brushes, my number eight, because um, her leg here is just as bright as the rest of her body when it needs to be dulled down a little bit just because it's in the background. So I'm going to come in with a very diluted gray and fill in her leg. I'm leaving like a little outline of sunshine just because she will have some sunlight on her back leg but again we don't want her back leg to have as much focus as her face okay so there's a couple of places now where i'm just going to do a little bit more of the black accents with the smallest brush I have. So the black that's on the side of her face here, I wanna reinforce that a little bit more. The, the black fur that comes out of her nose just a little bit. You can highlight those a little bit more. And then on the top of her head. On the side over here. And then there are some areas inside her ear that just because they're so deep, they have some shadows in there, so we can 
outline those with this black color. And I think her eyes might be dry, so I'm going to come in with that dark color and make sure her pupils get really dark. That's just going to make her eyes come to life a little bit if they're just as intense as everything else around them. Okay, um, so I think that's it for the foreground. I think that you could do a couple more, um, like maybe her collar needs some collar, color. Um, these little silver links that have her tags on them. I'll paint those in with that light gray, leaving a little bit of a white highlight sort of right through the middle of each one of those shapes just for the the reflection of light. Um, her collar looks like it's a little blue. I'm going to mix a little bit different of a blue, maybe a little bit darker than the tag here, and just paint in her collar. Again, I'm sort of negative painting here since a lot of fur is covering up her collar. I'm come, going along with this blue color and sort of painting like I did the grass where the edge is a solid blue but then it tapers up to um, re-emphasize the fur texture. Okay, so that's, that's about it. I'm gonna put a little bit more green back here just to indicate the leaves of trees. Um, but I'm not doing this in any rhyme or reason, kind of doing it pretty fast. I wet the paper beforehand so that everything would blend. And now I'm just dropping in some color. And I think the leaves just help it make a seem a little bit friendlier when you just have bare tree trunks. It's not as inviting. So some of these marks will blend into the water. Some of them will stay sort of sharp. It's a good, good to have a mix of that. Um, and I think I want the grass back here to be a little, just a touch darker. Just so that again, her, the, the highlights of Nika here stand out a little bit more if the areas around her are a little bit darker. So I'm gonna come in with another layer of green just to help her stand out a little bit more. Particularly on this side. She doesn't need to stand out anymore on this side just because her fur is doing that for her. All right, so that is our finished Nika painting. Thank you so much for joining me. This was really fun. I love painting dogs. I love painting all the fur. Uh, it's just so much fun and there's so much texture and so much fun ways that color blends together in a painting like this. So um, look, I look forward to pet, pet portrait number two where we will paint Rio. I will find out what kind of dog Rio is so that I can help talk about him while we're painting him. But this is Nika. 
Rest in peace, Nika. You are a beautiful dog, um, and I bet you are very, very friendly and just a great companion. All right. Thank you so much. Bye.